Um, hi, Edinburgh. Live. I am live. All right. This is really odd. Sorry. Um, normally, there's this other button that says go live, and I click that, and of course, it didn't work. So um, thank you all for joining me. Thank you for joining me from North Carolina and Edinburgh. Berg, and is that like in Scotland? Am I correct with that, Pamela? Um, oh, and Athena from the House of Stuart. Yeah, why she's decided to name her house that we don't know. And um, Georgia from Minnesota, I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you all for joining me. And as we're doing comments, I will try to answer any questions you can come up with. Um, I'll do my best to like refer back to the screen every once in a while. But I'd like to know if anybody is painting any fabric yet. Now I know that Georgia has done it. She's probably the first person that I know has done it. But has anybody else there tried it? So even after the live chat, if you could, you know, make the comments below whether or not you've tried this. Because until you've tried it, you just can't know how much fun it is because it is just so much fun. And when I don't get to paint for a while, I feel like I'm like in withdrawal. Um, hi, Athena. Hi, from the UK. Thank you very much for joining us. So this is how this all came about. I am teaching at the Grand Rapids AQS show. And the class that I'm teaching is the fractured glass. So this is one of the classes I teach. It's a half day class. And we in particular are going to be doing the paper pieced version of this. There are two different versions of it. And I decided I wanted to come up with a new layout. So this is my new layout because the book actually has you making large blocks that are not foundation pieced that are approximately 11 and a half or so inches um, when you're finished with them. And then also has paper or foundation pieced blocks like these smaller ones. And I was trying to find a way to bring the two of them together. And this is what I came up with. And I really wanted it to be very, very sparkly. So this is the start of it. Now, it's not done, obviously. Well, that's like life as I know it. Um, but what I do want you to know is I will be doing a whole new video on this technique because the original video was kind of embedded in another video and I felt like it never really got the, you never got all the explanation that I really thought you needed to. So I'm gonna do a live probably with Athena here so we can get really good close up shots, especially when it comes to the foundation piecing. But in doing this, I wanted it to look very, very stained glassy. I wanted it to be very sparkly. So what I'm gonna be doing today is showing you some of the things that I can do to make it a little sparkly and showing you some of the new Elizabeth St. Hillier um, Dorothy stencils from joggles.com. And all the links to the things I talk talk about will be in below in the links. So let's see, Minnesota, UK, hi Athena. Southern California and just started painting the fabric. Okay, this might be of interest to you, digital Donna, because I am, wait a minute, let me, I'm gonna switch a slide. I'm not sure if it's the right one. Yes, it is. I'm teaching at the Empty Spools Seminars, which is in Monterey, California. I've never been there before. Um, and this is probably very, very small and you can't see, but at the first session, February 25, there's my name way down there at the bottom. And I will be teaching this technique, this idea of painting your own fabric and then creating your own improvisationally pieced quilts. So if you're interested, it's emptyspools.com. Yeah, I think it's that. Maybe emptyspoolseminars.com. But Digital Donna, maybe you'd like to meet us in the middle of California, which is where I think maybe Monterey might be. I'm not 100% sure. All right. So what I wanted to do is show you some of the things that I'm working on so far. So here are some of the blocks that will go in the on-point um, fracture glass. And you can see some of the sparkle going on. This is additional sparkle I'm adding with stickles, glue, glitter. Now, what you need to know about this is all the paints that I'm going to be putting on here are 100% permanent. These are not. So this will be about a 30, maybe 35 inch quilt that I'm going to make. So it will be a wall hanging that could be washed by hand, but it couldn't be washed like the other fabrics that I use. So stickles is one of the things that's going to add some of the shimmer. 
Here is another one of the blocks. And again, you can see all the shimmer. Now these ones were done on my large plate, my big um, 12 inch plate that I'll be doing a little bit on there. And I happen to have one stencil that has this kind of glass-ish kind of idea. But you do see some of the dots that I'll be working with. And those are from Elizabeth St. Hillier, her new ones. And this is the block and it's basted with this really cool sparkle fabric that I got when I was in Tanzania. Um, that They make the coolest fabrics and these sparkles don't come off at all. But that's gonna be the back of the quilt as you go technique. And I'll be doing the easy sashings technique. So you'll wanna watch that video. Here is a few that I've been playing with so far. And this is the idea. Normally I tell you, all right, let's start by making a blank fabric first. What I decided to do this time is instead use some that I've painted that I don't think are great yet. So this one, I don't know how it got a weird square in the middle of it, but I've added a little bit to it just by using these dots. This one was really, really light using the um, one of the uh, peacock stencils and I did a ghost print and I think I need to add more to that. This one had teal and yellow to begin with and I've added some of the pink, the ghost print of a pink. Here I've added over a fabric that I think I've been looking at for a long time and I just never knew what to do with it but I used on this the gold is sparks. This is from at joggles.com. It's the art alchemy. I should have done a picture of this and done a slide. Sorry about that. But these are the sparks. There are sparks, there's metallic, and there's, no, nope, that's metallic. That's sparks. There's actually a third one also that I just don't think that I have one out, but sparks. So when you go onto Joggle's website, type in the art alchemy, art alchemy, or even sparks or metallics. And you will find there that was a metallic and that one was metallic. So this one I did with this metallic, all right? Very, very shimmery. The one thing about them is the consistency on these is a little bit thick. So I'll be showing you how I fix that up to work really great on the gel press on the fabric. All right. Here's another one. Now this one I think turned out fabulous. This was an old kind of pinky sort of a print that had the peacock stencil on it. And now it has got these fabulous little gold sparkly dots that I'm pretty sure this is one that I will add some stickles to. And because stickles take a long time to dry, let's just do it right now because it's right here in front of me and I don't want to miss it. All right. So what I'm going to do is these stickles have this very, very fine point perfect for drawing. So you can just take and go, wah, wah. Then maybe I'll come down here and I'll go the other way. All right. And this that I sew, was able to sew and quilt through the glitter with no problem. Um, at first I thought they were going to be permanent on fabric, so, but I was talking to Barb at Joggles and she said, nope, sorry, they are not permanent for wash. Yeah, they're not going to go anywhere, um, but you can't actually wash them. And I got, I got some nice colors. This is how they always come packaged from Spark, from Joggles. So let me use this blue one now because this little um, peacock feather has this really cool inside ring. This is a one of the stencils from Elizabeth's um, peacock collection. So you can find those all on Joggle's website. And she's got a whole bunch of new things. I can't keep up. She's got so many new ones coming out, but I keep having to do, you know, quilting videos. So I can't just do painting videos. I, I think I would kind of like to, but that's just not going to happen. All right. So there I've added, I mean, look at the extreme sparkle and it stays sparkly. It goes a little bit flatter in terms of it's raised, how it's raised up, but not so much that, I mean, you can actually kind of feel it. So you would not do this on a quilt that you're going to be washing. But this is fabulous to add to a quilt that would be a wall hanging, possibly um, 
hand washed over time. So I'm going to put this over here so it's safe because that does take a while, little while to um, dry. This one was cool because there was a dark blue and red under it and I did the ghost print of the gold. Here I just used one that just these teeny tiny dots. And all of these I think might not be quite finished. So the, here's another selection. Yep. And, and I got to thinking I needed to de leave some undone so you can see maybe how I might change them to be something that we would think is fabulous. Because some of these are really cool on their own, but my intention is to make them cooler. All right. So this one here is one of them. I thought this ended up being cooler and I still want to do something else to that. Not exactly sure where all of this is going to take us today, but these are... The stencils I'm talking about, this is the Dorothy collection. Let me start this here and put a fabric here because that paper sometimes sticks. So here is what they are. They are a variety of dotty dot dot dots. So little random, random random. This one is called Punchinello, I think. Um, there was a video that Elizabeth did a long time ago that she had this. And this, what she had originally were this about this wide. And it was what stencils, I'm sorry, what what sequins are punched out of. And now they've actually made a cool little stencil so you don't have to get the punch in, real punchinello. Here is kind of random drawn rough edges, random sizes, big sizes. I really like this one because this one's got a little bit of linearness to it. And the more random ones that I've not even used yet. All right. The idea, if you're going to use just dots, Okay. would be like this. You could use this one big little dot and then maybe the big dots over top of them so that they can play well together. And I'll try and do that combination. I do like that combination a lot. Um, the ones that are like maybe this size or no, maybe this one. So this one's kind of random. And maybe if it was with the punchinella or the punchinella on top. If the random dots were darker and the punchinella was a contrast to that, all right? So those are the dotty dot dots, the Dorothy dots. I think she should have called them dotty dot dots, but you know, nobody asked me. All right, and then I'm also gonna throw in some stamps. Um, I think this is the peacock stamp. These mine might be Da Vinci stamps. And then this one is an older one with just some rings on it. You can see that I don't take as good enough. Oh, there's another peacock. I don't take good enough care of my stamps. Um, some of my newer ones, I've been better about washing. And then some of the older ones, not so much. All right, let's just forgive me for that, okay? And then I'm going to also use just some of the random stencils. So this one I think might be peacocks. So that might, I really like the peacock one, as you can tell. There's just so many different ones in it. And then this one here is a classic swirl that I absolutely positively love. All right. So the other thing that we're going to use is the dilutions paint just like I always do. I love the dilutions paint because it's very, very fluid and you can actually take and mix different colors together. Sometimes because to use the sparks, I have to actually use a palette knife. I love the idea of just taking this and putting it in the bottle and then I don't have to use any palette knives. So we'll use that and we'll use the Liquitex um, iridescent medium. So it is an acrylic medium that has sparkle and shine. And how can you say no to that? That's the look I'm looking for. All right. And this also acts as a sometimes when we're using the sparks and metallic, sometimes they're a little bit thick and I'll show you how I just make them a little bit more fluid using the Liquitex iridescent medium. All right. So let us begin. We will begin Dee -dee 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 -dee. All right, we're going to begin with this one. This one, I did some silver stamping with one of those stencils. And I want to put on this, maybe this kind of dark teal sparks that is a, a metallic. This one's a metallic. All right. So when you look at it, I told you that sometimes they're a little bit thick. All right. This is pretty thick. All right. It's kind of like butter. And you really... For the gel press with fabric, I find I like it to be a lot more fluid than that. I've got a little bit of a hard shell here. Let me get that off. There. Okay. So what I do is I add iridescent medium. Now you could add fabric medium to it um, just because that's something else that will make it more fluid. 
and watch as I turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it. I am telling you, magically, the color rarely changes at all when you really get it turned. But then the consistency, it's a lot more fluid. It will actually roll out so, 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 so much better. So I love these ones from Art Alchemy because of the shine and the great colors that they have. But they're a little bit thick. So that's when I will add the iridescent medium. So using my palette, I'm going to put down probably too much paint because that's my M.O. All right, scrape it off here on the side. I might even clean off my palette knife. It's a novel idea. And then using just a regular palette. This one's the four and a half or inch or kind of one. Oh my goodness, do you see that? I didn't put enough paint on. There is a first time for everything. Do a little bit more here. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this is there. That's good coverage. All right. Remember, you can't take all day putting the coverage down. Done. That's all the time that you've got. And I'm going to use this kind of random dotty dot dot one. All right. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to take this one that I want to add some something to creating layers because layers is what makes things more interesting. All right, embroidery by machine. How did we get to talking about embroidery by machine? Um, it is very easy if you've got the right machine, and you're right there, um, Donna. It can get kind of expensive um, because there's so many threads. I love embroidery threads for doing machine quilting with, but I've never, well, it's not true. I did do some machine embroidery when I first started working at the Viking Faf store that I teach at now, Smith Owen Sewing Center. All right. So let's get that all. Now, I've added, I've pressed with my palms. My palms will inevitably get painty, right? And as I peel it up, I want to make sure that I got enough. If I see any of these dots that have more paint in them, I'm going to go back and pull it up, especially the little ones, because the little ones, obviously, I think it makes sense that they're a little bit harder to get the paint up, right? Deep, 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 deep. But you don't want to take all day doing it either because you still want to get, oh, that one right up there. Missed all four of those little dots there. And that one right there. I say I don't want to take all day, and then what do I do? I take all day. All right. So I have added a little bit more interest. Now, what I like to do with my stencil as I take it off, I'm going to take my stencil off, and this is my 12 inch. You can't see the whole thing, but this is my 12 inch plate. And I'm going to just take that stencil and put the wet side down, peel it up, and this will get covered in paint. I do not ever wash my stencils. That doesn't seem to be a problem in the world that I'm in as like doing the stamps do. All right, so now I'm going to take this guy. Don't know how this is going to turn out. This guy has a stencil. He's got a little bit of a stencil. He's still pretty lightweight. Now the thing you do have to consider when you are doing layers on fabric is you can't do 29 layers. If this was paper, you could do 29 layers. Sometimes I swear Elizabeth will literally do like 10 layers. Um, you can't do that on fabric if you want it to be able to be used in a everyday washed kind of a quilt. You need it to be able to be, you know, fabric. All right, so this one's, I'm going to wait on this one for a little bit as I decide on my next design. So this one has started, I actually did some of the random dot. I think that I did the ghost print over that. So let's, no, let's do this one. All right, so this one's a light one. All right, looks like I did some of the big dot on it. Now I'm going to do maybe a smaller dot on it. Actually, you know what I think I really want to do on that? I want to use one of the peacock stencils. All right, here, I'm going to do a peacock stencil on it. So you can imagine what that's going to look like. All right, and it's going to cover up all of this really light stuff that is a little lighter than I want it to be. Now, is this one done? Ghost prints you need to leave down a little bit longer Actually, this one's coming up pretty good. All right, nice and slow. Ghost prints, especially those that shimmer, 
Um, you need to leave down a little bit longer if you really, really want everything to come up. Now, I'm not sure that you guys are going to be able to see how absolutely cool this one actually is. Okay. You can see the big rings, but can you see there, there, there? You can see like almost like the absence of shimmer. There's shimmer all over, and then there's the absence of shimmer. Okay, that one looks pretty cool. I like that. All right, that's a keeper. Ooh, put that one over there. All right. So now I'm going to go over this light-ish-ish -ish teal with a dark-ish. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's see how this one looks. That one might be a little bit light. Let's go to this darkish ish ish. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, have I added, I think I maybe added a little bit of iridescent before, but I'm going to add just a little bit more. Do -do -do -do, do -do 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 -do. There. All right. Gets that consistency just a little bit more fluid. All right. Put this down. And this is a. This, again, is a metallic. I'm not actually using the sparks. Um, they're all kind of shimmery, so I believe that they could be interchangeable. I'm not going to clean off my palette because it had just a little bit of blue on it, which this is a blue-green, so that's going to be awesome. Oops, I got a thread. Got to hate it when you get a thread in there. Oops, I got another thread. It's apparels of painting with fabric. If you have that thread, it will actually end up just making a white line or, you know, like an invisible space where the paint won't go. All right, so now I'm going to use this peacock stencil because this one seems to be so great for the quilt that I'm working at. It gives just the right of movement. Um, some of these I printed on the 9 by 11 plates. You see that some of them are not going all the way over, um, but this... These are 8 by 10. I'm using my 8 by 10. Sorry for the pause there. I'm trying to piece things and maybe over the whole thing. Um, all right. You guys are still talking about embroidery machines. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to get all of that little detailing with the palm of my hand. Do, 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 do. And I think this will be the last one that I'll put down on the big plate so that I can show you how I'm going to pick that up and what I'm going to add to it before I do it. All right, let's see how it looks. Ooh la la. Oop, right there. See, I've got a lot of little paint in there. Go back and get it. So take your time as you're pulling it off so you can just get all that really great detail. You hate to lose the detail from the stencil. Um, chances are you bought the stencil because you like the entire design. Okay. Oops. All right, I really like the swirly bit or the eye of the peacock. Is that what it would be? I don't know anything about peacocks except that the subdivision my brother moved into when he moved to Ovidio, Cal Florida. Oh, that's yummy. They used to have peacocks. Do you see the metallic? Do you see the shine? I don't think that you can actually miss it. You would be blind if you missed that. Or they'll look for too long and you could be because it's really, really shiny. Now I'm going to take this. And I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to try to pick up that ghost print. Oh, it's not going to show. I just know it's not going to show on that. I'm going to try and pick it up on this, although I don't think it's going to show. I don't have anything light enough that that is actually going to show on the ghost print. All right, so put that down. I think I have enough miscellaneous layers going on here. The only other thing I want to use do on this now is I want to add some circles to this stencil so that it'll be more circles. So instead of just the remnants of the circles, I want to actually see the circles. And to do that, there, all right, I'm walking away and I'm finding the thing I want to use. So I'm just going to use a sponge adapter. All right, I learned this from, from Sue Penn, my friend, Sue Penn. All right, I'm going to do something really different here. I'm going to use a green so that it'll be really hopefully stand out. Now it is going to be on the bottom layer, which means it may or may not actually show as much as I think it might, so we will see. So with this, just another way to use stencils, add maybe just a little dots here and there, maybe not a all over dotty dot dot thing going on. Okay. 
up here where there's, you can't see it on this side, but over here on this side, there's not that much paint already covering it. So I know that I'll be able to see these green dots. Let me add just a little bit more. Doing this does use, I think, more paint. It all, I always feel like I have to keep adding more, 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 more. Okay, a few more here. And I like this stencil because it's got the different size dotty dots. Dorothy dots is what she called them. I'm, I'm thinking, did Dorothy wear dots? Was her outfit dot? I can, I'm not quite sure. Okay, so I have added dots to the big 12 by 12. When it's time for us to do what we're going to do with this, I will, ooh, I'm going to flip this over, add some of that part of it. It's like the negative dot. Oh, yeah. All right. I will move this plate over so that you can see what I have accomplished. All right. So we've got to let this completely dry after I take that one speck off. Need to let this completely dry. All right. So now let's go back to what we were working on here. This is the ghost print. And yeah, you know what? The one thing about the ghost prints with these really, really fine stencils is they don't make that much of an impact and they dry faster. So there is the slightest little bit on there. Nothing really to write home about. So let's, on top of this one, do a new dot pattern. Let's not do Punchinella. Let's do the big random dot. Or maybe, you know what, I did this on part of it already and you can't really, really see it here, but now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to do, because this was the ghost print on top, now I'm going to do the opposite. And I'm going to do something darker. So I'm going to use the dark shimmer. And this one is, that's a metallic again. Okay, I swear I was going to use some of the sparks. And I do use the sparks, just not at this moment. All right. Put that one over there, this one over here. And this should give us enough time for the big plate to dry once I get through this process. So when I'm working on fabrics, they're not done until they're done. Um, at some point, you'll know they're done. And then that's when I put them in the done file. Until then, I just keep adding. Um, you can add stamps and not create so much thick layering of paint. And I'm going to do that next. Um, which is the thing that I really love about stamps. You know where it's going. Um, whereas with stencils, you know, you're kind of hoping that everything does what you want it to do. Okay. Deep, 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 deep. Okay. Do, do. All right. So this should be a dark dot. All right, it is. And I can see it. I'm hoping you guys can see it. I want to make sure I get all the dotage off. All right. Oh, and look what's left behind. Yeah, now this is cool. Oops. Major miss over there. And right here. All right. So now... I have created much more design on this. This has a lot of little layers, but it's still not very thick. So this one, and I think this one's great, although I am gonna add, as long as we're here, let's do it. I'm gonna add some of the stickles to it. With this design, I like to just, I'll start up here. Just do these like long lines. And when I use this on the quilt, it looks so cool. Um, because this particular quilt everything stays directional. So the lines actually stayed directional. Right. This will be a very, very cool piece. All right. I mean, can you believe that shine? I mean, you can't get shinier than a stickles. There you go. Super glitter, right? Along with all the dots in the, I don't know how many other layers I had underneath that one at some point in time. All right, so I'm going to pick this up. Well, this time, just because I don't know what else to do with it. Oops, I'm going to lay, okay, I can't do it right here. I've got not enough going on. All right, 
I'm just going to take, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to put that somewhere, but there's nothing to put it on because everything is in the way. So I'm going to put it on this over here. All right, you can't see, but I'm over here on my ironing board and I'm putting that stencil face down onto a previous piece just to get some of the paint off. So I'll bring it back now because I don't want to mess this up because this one I need to add. That's a ghost print. So I want to put that on something. I want to put that on. Oh, I don't know. Oh, how about this? This one. Never quite like this one. All right. So I'm going to put that blue ghost print right on top. Okay. Right. I'm going to let that set for a little bit. I think this is pretty dry. I want to do a little bit of stamping and then we're going to be able to do that. All right, so none of it really came off, but it made me feel better that I just, I mean, there's a smidge, but sometimes I just don't like to waste the paint on the backside. All right, so sometimes you get something going on and you're like, well, it's cool-ish, but it needs something else-ish, and that's when stamping comes in. So on this, I'm going to add, because that kind of is a peacock stencil, I'm going to use this, maybe both of these little peacock stencils. And I'm going to mix up a paint over here. I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use the sparks. I'm going to use this teal and see what happens. And I have mixed this one with the iridescent medium already. So it is a really nice um, fluid consistency. I'm going to take it over here. And you need to spread it out. You don't want it to be really thick. If it's really thick, it'll just kind of get inside the um, stamps. So comes over here, press it down evenly, pick it up, press it down evenly, and pick it up. I'm liking this already. So come over here. Oh, yeah. This was a great, cho great choice, Nancy. Good job. Bring this one over here. So do a combination. Okay. And then as my plate gets, you know, stamped, I'll actually brayer it out a little bit more. Oh yeah, okay. one more of these down here. All right, this one had so much stuff going on that it just was never going to make it into any quilt honestly it was just going to always just be that piece that i was like you know there's something there but i just don't know what is there now i really like it there maybe this one little spot in here and then you got to know when to say when okay when Okay, I have said when. So that's what the stamps are going to do for you. It's the ability to take something that just ain't great yet and make it greater. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. And as long as we have all of this paint over here, you guys won't be able to see too much of it. But I'm going to do the punchinella, this one over here, on top of this dark one it's just dark it's just got stuff going on i'm going to do the punchinella on top of that um i often do use multiple plates my be the first few um, videos i did though there was just one plate so you can just use one plate i just find i get more done when i do more i mean that's why those of us that have embroidery machines might have another machine so that you can be doing embroidery and sewing at the same time. All right, so I'm going to continue doing a little bit over here. I'm going to leave that there for a second. No, I better pick that up and then get a ghost print down. Okay, sorry. Distracted. See what this one does? All right, now, now we're talking. All right, that little punchinella one, and I like how I actually missed some spaces. So I've still got some interesting dots. It's not all covered. Now I'm going to take this one off, and I'm going to put, oh, that's a big one, but I'm going to put it down anyway. I'm going to put it right here in the corner, so a corner of it will have that blue silver over top of the green. Now, remember these two? No, remember these two that I used, I'm going to go put them into my
excuse the sound in here. This is where the utility room is. I should have started this ahead of time, but I don't really want to mess up my good stamps. There, okay, they are now in water. Okay, okay, I'm back. All right, so now it's time for the big one. So let's move some stuff. This little stuff, this little stuff. Yep, and I know I showed you more stamps and stencils that I used than I used, but that's what I have to do. Um, if I pull out all of my stencils, I will get nothing done. I will just look at my stencils and try to decide what I want to use. All right, so I've got all of this stuff on the big one. And what I did have, hopefully I can find, is a big one that was kind of plain. All right. So I'm going to go with this one and I hope it does it. So this is one that I'd done. This was just like, I just did a pickup. There's a little bit of stamping on here, right? Nothing fancy on there. I'm going to put over top of that because that just is not happening for me. Nothing's exciting about that. I'm going to put on that a, I can't do that. I can't do yellow. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use just iridescent medium. If I use just iridescent medium, you will be, oh my goodness, it's like I'm so surprised I thought of this. If I use just iridescent medium, I'll be able to see what was already there. So just putting a line at the bottom and then lightly rolling up and down till that that I just put on is covering it. Gotta move my paints out of the way on the end. And the, when, when it works perfect is when you can actually still see a bit of the design underneath. Okay, this is going to be, I think, pretty cool. It's going to take a while for us to see it, though. All right. So now I'm going to take this one that already has stuff going on. I'm going to put that on top. There. And this is the 12 by 12 plate. Um, the biggest plate that they make right now is a 12 by 14. And I do use that sometimes for this kind of an idea. Um, 12 by 12 actually is a really great one to use for a um, applique design. Not a hand design because the paint is going to make it a little bit stiffer than you would want for a hand design. Um, but really, really cool for machine applique. All right, so that now has to set. So we're gonna come back to these other ones and see what's going on with them. So this is the one that I had, the ghost print of the blue. It's okay. It's not, it's not by any means gonna be my most fabulous one. And it does leave some behind, but at some point when you leave it there long enough, it will all come up. Okay. And this was the long dotty dot dots. Oh. All right. Now this is okay. I don't love it. I feel like I need to add something else to it. So let's make it quick and easy and say we're going to add, we're going to add something that we can see. This one is a dark gray. Okay, anybody see my palette knife? There it is. Okay. You guys are going, really, Nancy? Oh, man, it's kind of stiff. Let me see if I can, I don't think I put the cap on all the way because it might be too stiff to use. Let's see if I can wake it up. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. So I put the iridescent medium in. The paint was pretty stiff. It might not ever come back. It wasn't hard. It wasn't all the way hard, but I think I suspect I did not put my cap on all the way because the other ones I haven't used either in a long time and they're all okay. All right, maybe a little bit more. And with it, some black paint to darken it up because it had been dark. And now I want it to get back to dark. It turned a little bit grayer with the iridescent medium. So you know what? You just create. You just keep going, right? It, there's no, no crying over spilt paint. Is that how that works? 
All right, I think this is going to be okay. All right, because we're going to do a stamp with this one. We're going to do, well, my other ones are gone, so I guess we're going to, no, where's the, oh, there, we're going to use this one. Sorry, that was my head. We're going to use this one on it, and we're going to see what it does, right? So it's a little bit glumpy. Oh, but that smoothed out quite nicely, actually. Let me put a little bit more out there. I'm surprising myself. Not new. I surprise myself all the time. Did I mention today's my birthday? I don't think I did. So if you're still listening, today's my birthday. I had a really nice gathering of friends and family for my birthday over the weekend. It's my big one. Can you see it? Oh, it's not dark enough, is it? I feel like I needed to make it darker. It's super shiny for sure, but it's not dark enough. All right, we're going to go extreme because we're already here and we got to wait for the big guy anyway. We're just going to add black. Mix that in there and see if it makes it a right color. Ooh, that was pretty. All right, I'd like to do that three times. Oops, this is too puddly down here. Can't have a puddle. Let's see what this one does. That's better. All right, and it's actually pretty cool. The black has like silver resting almost on top of it. Oh yeah. Now this will be something I can use. Okay. And I love swirls. Swirls are always, uh, when I teach or demo this, it shows. It's always the swirls that go first. There and up there. All right, I think I've made that into something now. And now, if I were to take some of the stickles and add on these swirls, maybe inside the swirls, oops, add some swirly glitters. Come on, dude, come on out. Oh, did I get that one clogged? I'll have to fix that. I found a needle in that actually fixes it quite nicely. That was my only purple one, though. Maybe blue's better. Well, blue's better anyway, isn't it? So now I can add extra shine, remembering that the paint, all of the paints I've used are absolutely washable and permanent. It's only this glitter glue that if you really wash it, um, it might not all stay. So if you wash it by hand, it's going to be there for a while. But my intention with this quilt is that it be a wall hanging. Not that you can always, you know, if, if I were to give it away, which I don't do that a lot, but it would actually, could be washed and you just might not know. All right, a little bit more randomness. All right, so now I've got way, way, way more glitter, which is going to work great in my stained glass quilt. Okay, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to get this out of the way so I can do something to pick up this black, and then we're going to try and pick this up on the big plate, although it is not, it is not really super dry yet. So let's put this down so I'll have an entire shiny black piece that I could do glitter just on. I could use some of the um, neopaque, the Jacquard neopaques are the ones that are um, very, very opaque. You can pretty much do anything on top of them with those and still see it. All right, coming over here. I'm gonna look over here. Is that what I wanted to see? Or is that what I wanted to see? All right. So all of the product that I'm using is available at Joggles. Um, please shop at Joggles and it would help me a lot if you actually use the links below because those are set up as um, 
share a sale or affiliate sale, so I actually get a little bit of a commission thing, which means then I can buy more paint, pretty much. It doesn't even come close to covering the paint that I wanna buy. All right, making sure things are closed as we go to this next thing, all right? So I'm gonna peel this one up. It's gonna be a dark gray with a little bit of blue in it. Um, if I leave it there longer, I think I'm just gonna leave it there longer. So, meh, I like, think I'm like, <laughs> could I be more like undecisive? <laughs> Is that the word? Indecisive? All right, so like that. So then this one shiny on one side, black on the other side. A lot of really, really great shimmer and shine on that. So maybe I'll do some dark blue something on top of that to make it really work for this quilt that I'm working on. Over here, oops, that one's got the glitter. I gotta move that out of the way. This one that's off camera-ish. What did I have on there? I don't know, but it's coming up clean as a whistle. Oh, I put that shimmer. I had the ghost print of the small punchinello on top. So again, lots and lots of shimmer. And then you can see all the extra dots there. All right. But this is the one I've been kind of waiting for. In order for this to all pull up, it has to be pretty dry. Um, so I'm going to do it now. I'm just not sure if it's all going to work. Let's move everything out of the way. Okay, so it's on my big glass mat. This is a like a Tim Holtz craft mat. It's a tempered glass. I also have another one that's a Cricut mat. All right, so for this to work, it has to be pretty dry. I don't know that it's dry enough yet for the full effect, but let's see. Because really, you just can't wait around all night, right? So remember, this one, I used just the remnants of the stencils left them all down, put some of the green dots on top of that. And then I used, see, I can tell it's not going to come up right there. Then I used the iridescent medium as the light because the fabric already had kind of an ombre of green going on. And the idea then is this is a true monoprint. When artist artists do this, they will create an entire scene on the glass or the plate um, and then they pick it up all as one so it is mono it's a one pull it doesn't have you know two of them there's only ever one available unless you make you know a fake copy but right there in the middle it's not coming up so i'm going to start pulling from the other side because this is looking really really cool and ever since I figured this out using my stencils, the leftovers of the stencils and the stamps, all right, I'm gonna pull it all the way up, although it's not all coming. If I leave it there, everything that's left behind would actually stay behind. You can try and get it to pick up by doing that. Oh, yeah, and then a little bit here. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. All that that's left behind, if I would left this overnight, that would have all come up clean as a whistle. But this is what I have now. Um, I can see where I did the stencils, the leftovers of the stencils. I had a stamp in there. You know, what I cannot see are the green dots. And I wondered because they were behind if I was going to be able to see them. Here's one of the peacock stencils. This was a Da Vinci, I think, well, I can't remember which one that was. Um, but this, is really cool for backgrounds and things. But this also would be for my large, for the large squares in the quilt, I need more like this. And so here I see some dotting opportunities. So for this quilt, I might do swirls and dots because I've got the impression here from that stamp. So I'm just gonna follow the swirl of the stamp with some more glitter. And I'll play with this a little bit more tomorrow, adding more glitter to it. So I get all the shine I need so that I will have enough fabric for my stained glass fractured glass quilt. Let's see if I can get back to a camera over here. Uh, what's wrong with my mouse? There it is. There it is. Dun, da, da, da. All right. Yep. You're just a little bit late, Linda, but that's okay. You could always watch it a little bit later. So there you go. More painting, more painting, more painting. Um, 
it's really very, very fun. You've got to give it a try. You could take a class with me at some point. Like I mentioned, I'm teaching this in Monterey Bay, Bay California at the Empty Spool Seminars. I actually am teaching it in Grand Rapids here in September for the AQS show, but that class actually is full. So you can't sign up for that one. Um, but I love traveling too. So if you're interested, I could always come out to your guild or your quilt guild or your artist guild and um, teach you how to paint on fabric, making something uniquely yours. That is the thing that I, well, okay, that and get my hands dirty. I like that too. All the product available at Joggles, follow the links below to help me out with the, um, with a little bit of affiliate sales. I really appreciate that. Um, and that's it. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Thank you all very much for watching.